there's probably five billion books written on that, right? right. But yeah. one, one of the things, and this is another one of my culture axioms, is I want to be better today than I was yesterday and better tomorrow than I am today. And that sounds vague, but it's meant to be vague because to me, it's, it's every aspect of my life. <laughs> Man, you know, we were talking, obviously, before we started shooting, um, about battling insecurity when it comes to business yeah. development. Talk with us through uh, what is known as imposter syndrome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm excited about this episode, too, because it's something I'm still exploring. Uh, I haven't mastered this yet. Um, this is something that uh, I've been working on for a while, and I think... Uh, imposter syndrome is 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 a well sourced name. I think uh, I think it identifies kind of the idea that that you are plagued with plagued. Is it too soon? Uh, yeah, maybe not. Too that. soon. Maybe okay, not well, <laughs> you're pandemic with. I'm pandemic with this idea of of being an imposter, and the the idea really is this, right? I'm 15 years in the business, and Internally, I'm thinking like someday, someday someone's gonna figure out that I have no idea what I'm doing. Like that, that. That's like an internal fear. That yeah, that I I I'm not as good as I might seem, or um, you know, like that I, I that I'm just not enough. That I'm not, I'm just not good enough. I, I, I it's I, it's luck that I've gotten to this place, um, and that that it really has nothing to do with me. It's just this is how the chips fell, and I was on this side of luck. Yeah, yeah, and it, and it's, um, and it's one of the reasons why I have to remind myself of who I am, the things that I've done, and uh, what what God has allowed me to be a part of, and and how He's shaping me and has shaped me up to up until this point. There's probably some of you who are like, what are you talking about? Like, yeah. super confident. Maybe maybe yeah, that's maybe. you. Maybe yeah. you are like naturally confident in absolutely everything, and you never doubt yourself ever. I think you're a liar. Uh, yeah, I mean, and if that's if you're saying, <laughs> oh yeah, I never deal with like insecurity yeah. on any level. Yeah, uh, I think you're lying. Yeah, and if if you do, just comment below. Yeah, and let us know well, yeah. how great you are. Yeah, tell, tell us how you came to that place. Yeah, yeah. and how and you figure that while out. you're commenting, go ahead and smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, and. Click the little bell for notifications. It helps with the algorithm. It helps this video get boosted up yep. so people can uh, see it and be helped as well. So, yeah. imposter syndrome. Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, I, I've been in the marketing world for quite a few years as well. As well, Probably it's maybe 10 years mm -hmm. in marketing, uh, specifically social media and then digital marketing. And I still feel like, you know, there's that voice in my head that's like, you have no idea what you're doing. Yeah. And just wait, if somebody if somebody only knew yeah. that you have no idea what you're doing, yeah. they would never hire you. Yeah. And it's like, well, I know realistically, like the the like the fruit is there, right? Mm -hmm. Like like the the business is there, the success is there, the experience yeah. is there, the education is there, and all of that's true, but there's still that like voice that's like, mm -hmm. you have no idea what you're doing. Yeah. And you're a liar. Yeah. Like like how do you deal with that? Yeah, and I've talked about this before too. It's it's about who you surround yourself with. I think that that's that's huge in in everything you do, no matter what it is. Uh, but for me, and I know that I, I say this a lot, but my wife is paramount in in almost every aspect of of this internal piece because these are things that I struggle with. These are areas of my life where. I feel like a failure. I feel like a fraud. I feel like, um, again, that, that idea of if, if people only knew all of the things that I don't know. So yeah, I, I know the things that I'm comfortable with, but if they only knew all the things I don't know, they'd realize that I'm not an expert or whatever it is, right? And, and sometimes I'll get down on myself and my wife has to, to legitimately say to me, hey, think about this. Think about this accomplishment and this accomplishment and we did this and mm -hmm. this investment and uh, the Airbnbs and the new construction from the ground up and all of these things. And so, again, that's why 
I try to remind myself and to remind other people of, of what they've done and what they've accomplished. Not looking at all of the bad things, because if you look at all the bad things, then all you're going to see are bad things. But if you look at the good things and remind yourself of those things, then it will help you to be in a position to take steps forward that are healthy, uh, that are wise, that are smart. Yeah, so how, what are some practical steps? Like what are some things to uh, like identify like this imposter syndrome to know that that's really what it is? Mm -hmm. And then like how do you like overcome it? How do you Mm -hmm. work past it to get to the other side of it to where it doesn't cripple you? Because I feel like, you know, if, if we spend too much time thinking about or doubting our own capacity or mm-hmm. capabilities, we will ultimately get, you know, my pastor calls it analysis paralysis. Sure. Like yeah. where you just, you're stuck thinking and fearing that you, mm-hmm. you can't move. Yeah. But we have to keep moving in forward in life. We have to keep pursuing our goals. Right. Um, so how do we, how do we overcome it? Yeah. So that, that idea of pursuing your goals, I think is, is an interesting concept. Um, there's probably 5 billion books written on that, right? <laughs> right. But one, one of the things, and this is another one of my culture axioms, is I want to be better today than I was yesterday and better tomorrow than I am today. And that sounds vague, but it's meant to be vague because to me, it's, it's every aspect of my life. I want to be better tomorrow than I am today in, in every aspect of my life. And the only way I can actually do that is to identify the areas of my life that I want to be better in. And then I can be practical and uh, I can be purposeful in, in pursuing that and what that looks like. And that's the thing too, of imposter syndrome is, is going to live in the space where you have undefined uh, areas. It's going to live there because you can't ever address it. You can't ever shine the light on it. And so for me, this is a difficult piece because success, the name that we place on that success, or you've achieved success. What, what is success? I think it's, it's such a, uh, a mystery to me of what success actually looks like and, and when I've actually achieved success. I, I don't know. And because I don't know, then I can't succeed because there's no metric to, to measure that by. And if I, if I can't ever succeed, then I'm always going to feel like an imposter. No matter where I'm at, no matter what I've achieved, I haven't achieved success because I've never identified what that is. Yeah. And so that's practical in terms of, of beginning to work toward killing it. Yeah. B- beginning to work toward uh, just casting it out entirely. And I think it's always going to creep up. But the reality is, is that once you can identify that it's there, then you can begin to take the actual action on it and, and move toward uh, resolution on it. Yeah. So like you, you mentioned shining light on it because um, mm-hmm. it's something that you can't always do. You can't necessarily shine a light on like that because it's, it's, it's rooted in a doubt, you mm-hmm. know? Um, but it brings up an interesting thought. I believe that, you know, if you, if you internalize your change, like I, I don't know a single person who has looked deep within themselves and then come out feeling great about it. Mm-hmm. Like most of the time when we like think or we or we're introspective mm-hmm. deeply, we come out feeling super depressed. Yeah. <laughs> like we don't feel good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, cause it's that doubt thing. It's that, that, that root yeah. of imposter syndrome yeah. that so many of us deal with. Yeah. And so it's like, there's, you know, to shine light in there means that there has to be some sort of external identifier, mm-hmm. you know, to where we can look beyond ourselves to see, am I living up to what, you know, external code or source of, of identity is giving me, mm-hmm. you know, rather yeah. than looking internally. Everyone is always saying the same thing when it comes to this, right? You have like this self-affirmation thing. You have this, uh, you know, self-love and self-identifiers and self-self, all of those self-help, all of those things are self-focused. And I think that if you are always focused on self, you're always going to have these problems. And so to me, spending time in the Bible each morning is not about me. It's about God. 
I'm identifying who God is. I'm remembering who God is. I'm remembering that that God is perfect and that God is love and that God loves me. And so I can move from a space of just being totally grumpy and and hating that I woke up in the morning, which is terrible, right? We should we should be grateful that we had another morning. But I'm just whatever it is. I don't know. I, I don't know. But but I know that I have to I have to make that shift in my mind, and I have to do that by looking outside of me, because me thinks that mornings are terrible. Right. God's word says that His mercies are new every day. He's merciful even though I'm grumpy. And so those are the things that I go to first. So let's think, like, let's wrap this up thinking and talking something practical. Mm -hmm. Like, practically speaking, what do you do? What is a real step? You know, I'm a bullet points kind of person. Mm -hmm. Um, So like, what action step Mm -hmm. can I take to help overcome this, like on a daily basis? Yeah, so of course, mind shift, right? Renewing your mind, thinking differently about it. But I think something that's helpful for me is to to teach someone what it is that I do. And so as you do that, all of a sudden you re, you're recalling all of the information that you actually have, all the things that you've accomplished, all the things that you have been able to do, and that will change your outlook on that. And so very practically, it looks like this. Tell them what they need to do and then do it. So. If it's like in your business, if you, if you sell widgets, right, the first thing that you need to do is you need to be well acquainted with the widget. You need to know what it does. You, know, you need to know its value. You need to know why other people need it and why what the widget that you have is the best one and why they should buy it from you, right? Mm-hmm. Tell someone how to do that, the best way to do that, and then make sure that you are doing that. Make sure that you're actually taking those steps as well. It's not about you. Well, right? It's yeah. not about you. If, if it's all about yourself, it's all self, 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 then, then of course you're going to be looking at yourself. So, but if you start looking outward and you look at how can I help someone with the information I have, you realize that you do have a bunch of information that's valuable. And if you're providing valuable information to someone else, they'll be able to use it and use that value uh, for their gain too. And so it's, it's a win-win on both sides.